Hey Jack, looking at your uh, rookie season then coming into this year, I just want to know what areas of game you perhaps feel you've grown the most or excelled the most or improved the most in this year as opposed to last year? Yeah, I think uh, my whole game just evolved. You know, my whole game um, took a step and I liked where my game was this year, you know, so it was a, a good year for me in that sense. Um, so I think mostly my full game just evolved. What about the work of the whole team? I mean, it's a young team. It's an up-and-coming potential team. Have you seen the growth process in some other guys too? Yeah, I mean, we had guys step up. You know, McLeod, Bastion, I think they both had great years. Um, became a, a solidified line for us with Woody. Um, that was a really good line for us throughout the year. Uh, obviously, Sharon and, and Kooks had a great year um, coming in as rookies. And Share scoring 16 goals, establishing himself as a, a top six guy, and same with Kooks, you know. So um, it was it was good for those two, and then I think uh, a bunch of us took steps and, and are moving in the right direction. You mentioned those two. Um, I know you had different line mates throughout the year, but it seemed like at the end there with Sharon Govich and Gwokin and you guys really seemed to gel together. What did you like playing with those two, and how do you think your line kind of bonded together? Yeah, they were good. Um, I think we... We, we worked through it. We had a we had a good stretch of games there, you know. Um, obviously, they're both really good players, and I enjoyed playing with them. So uh, we'll see where it goes, and, and, you know, those guys helped me, and, and I thought we had a good line going. What are you looking to work on in the summer? I don't know if you're planning on going to the Worlds or not or if you're going to just start training. What your summer plans are, and what do you want to improve upon this summer? Yeah, I'm going to take a few weeks off here and then um, get back at it in, in, in early June. Um, you know, I got some things, some ideas in my head that I want to work on, and um, I think my game took a, a good step this year, but there's still another level to get to. And when you're looking at your personal growth, I mean, we just talked about it on the ice, but I know there were meetings when Lindy would have the leadership group and the, the captain soonsy group, and he brought you in on some of those meetings. Uh, how, does it, how do you feel your role kind of growing as one of the leaders on this team, even though you are only uh, young and 19, but feel like you're growing as a leadership on this group? Yeah, I mean, that's that's my role. You know, I'm here to to help lead this team. And um, at some point, it can't just be on the ice. I got to start to 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 follow up and and uh, and lead off the ice as well and be more vocal. But, you know, we got a, a young core and, and guys that respect each other. And obviously, Nico is going to be a great captain for us for a long time. So um, one of these years here and, and starting this year, I'm going to fill in and, and start to help Nico and, and try to be a leader for this team. And the, I mentioned Lindy uh, bringing you into the group, but what did you think of his first year behind the bench, whether it was his style, his personality? What did you like about his uh, coaching? Yeah, Lindy was good for me. You know, he's we had a good relationship, um, good communication. You know, he let me play, he gave me leash and um, and helped me. So I have no bad things to say about Lindy. You know, he was, he was great for me and um, he gave me an opportunity. That's what I needed. I needed the opportunity to uh, get a ton of ice and, and be that guy. And, and he gave me that opportunity, and um, and it was a good year for me. And what do you think the next step would be for this team next year? I know we talked to you recently, and you said, you know, growth is great, but you want to start winning games. So when you're looking ahead to next year, what is kind of the next step you think this group needs to take as a collective? Yeah, yeah. Um, First things first, our our fans should be excited. You know, we got a good young team here. We got a good young core, um, a bunch of guys that are are going to be a good players for this team for a long time. So, I think next year, um, I'm not saying we're going to make the playoffs or anything, but I'm going to say we we need to start to to win games and and play meaningful hockey down the stretch, um, whatever that may be. So, you know, next year we're going to really focus on on hammering out and and staying focused throughout the year so we can. In game in game eighty and eighty one, eighty two, be playing meaningful hockey and, and trying to get into the playoffs. Thank you, Jack. Good luck. Thank you, Sam. We'll go to Anthony Facilli, MSG Networks. Hi, Jack. Just wondering, with such a crazy schedule and all these games, for you to just get through it um, and grow, uh, how do you think it's going to make you better as you move forward? Yeah. Um... It was a good year for me. You know, I played all 56 games. I liked where my game was at. So I feel comfortable going in the summer. But at the same time, um, like I said, there's definitely more levels for me to get to. And I got to keep working on my craft. You talked about, you know, playing more meaningful games and, and, and winning more games. Do you think it's time next year to, to, to make people pay on the power play and to become a, a better special teams 
Team. Yeah, I mean, that's something we're going to work on, and that's something that cost us games at times in this year, you know. So that's something we got to focus in on. And, and next year, we got to we got to come back and have a good penalty kill, and our power play's got to start to score. So that's how good teams beat 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 teams when they're not playing their best, and that's uh, something we were missing out on this year. Thank you. Thanks for everything. Thank you, Fooch. We'll go to Mike Morial with NHL.com. Hey, Jack. Um, I know you said you like where your game's at. Uh, on a scale of one to five, five being the highest, wh where do you feel your game is after year two? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can give you an exact number. Um, with where I'm at right now, I think I had a great year, you know. Um, but I think there's more. There's definitely more to more to be done. And um, you know, if I don't, if I take the points away and don't don't look at the numbers and I just look at my game, I can say, I can honestly say I had a great year, you know. So. Um, when I look at it that way, I'm, I'm pretty happy. But at the end of the day, you know, there's there's more room for me to grow, and and this team's not going to go uh, go anywhere unless I continue to take the right steps. And and we're going to need the same out of Nico, Bradder, um, Pav, Blackie, and Smitty. You know, so guys like that, we need to keep uh, keep pushing forward and, and keep getting better. How hard is it being an effective center in this league, Jack? And I, I, I fans probably don't understand I mean are there details you feel you can only learn and enhance but by going through the NHL experience yeah um you know obviously my first year was frustrating and I wouldn't have had near as good a year as I did this year if I didn't go through that you know so it's all learning and, and you, you live and learn and um and you learn things about yourself too not just about the league so for me um I'm continuing to learn and, and look I just finished my second year and I haven't even turned 20 yet you know so I'm doing pretty good and, and I'll get there how, how difficult is it having success on face-offs I mean is it an area that you know not only requires you know repetition but maybe that experience against those top centermen in the league and and do you keep a book or or you know mental note on players you've gone up against and their tendencies it's a uh it's all of it. I mean, it's all repetition. It's all some games are hot, some games are cold. Um, but I, I need to get to the consistent, a consistent spot where I'm, I don't need to be leading the league in face-offs every year. I just need to be around 50% and, and be able to win the important face-offs. Um, are you happy with the progression of this rebuild? You know, Fitzy wanting the young players to mature together? Yeah, I mean, um, like I said, we're in a good spot. We got a really good young core here and we got a a lot of a lot of promise here you know our fans should be excited um but i've said it like at some point we're gonna need to start winning games and, and take a step and and not just be that young developing team but be a team that can contend and, and teams come to the rock and it's a hard it's a hard game to win i asked ty about this yesterday you know about having you as a roommate what it was like so i'm gonna ask you what, what was it like having ty as a roommate <laughs> and um what you know you know, as a rookie, Jack, did, did he, you know, did he maybe ask you a few things, even though it was in your second year? Um, did he ask you a few things here and there and just have some serious conversations in that regard? Um, no, I'll tell you what, it was, <laughs> it was pretty much just goofing around the whole time. I can't say Ty was coming up to me for any big brotherly advice. Um, can't say that was happening at all. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, Mike. We'll go to Corey Massasak with The Athletic. Jack, what was this? I, I asked Jesper uh, Boquist yesterday what this year was like for his family with Adam going through COVID and Jesper going through all this. What was this What was this like for your, your family? Just you were part of one of the big outbreaks. You know, Quinn was part of one of the big outbreaks. The program had a couple, multiple ones, I think. Just what was this like? Yeah, it was um, <laughs> so obviously a interesting year um with all of that and I think all five of us ended up getting COVID um so we're glad everyone's feeling better now but just it was weird um parents didn't come down here they came down here once um all year you know that it would have been nice to have them come to a few more games or even uh have some friends come down but it is what it is you know we're in we're in these times and hopefully next year we're we have people visiting us, and, and we're playing in front of a packed uh, packed house here at the Rock. So 
we'll see how it goes. But this year it was it was okay. It was interesting. Yeah. You mentioned uh, friends. You I it was it was surprising that like the first guy that you got to play against from the program was was Cam the other day. Yeah. Um did you get to, did you get to talk to him much before yeah. after the game? Yeah, I talked to him a bit before the game and then um just been texting him a lot, you know, we it's obviously restrictions, but uh it was good to see him and catch up, you know, so uh it's pretty funny that I got to play him. So I was we were kind of talking about that for for a month, um month or two once we knew he was signing and hoping we we'd be able to play each other. So I was, I'm glad that happened. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. And then whenever you look towards next year, I, you, you're going to play a lot of those guys. Like it, it feels like almost every, you know, every few games, there's going to be a, Oh, Jack's playing Alex for the first time or Jack's playing Cole for the first time. It just, it just feels like that's going to be sort of a, a big theme of next year. Are you looking forward to that? Yeah, we'll see. Um, should be a lot of fun. Um, you know, got some, some buddies coming into the league now. So, be pretty funny to play some of these guys and the other teams. And then lastly, um, what, uh, well, how do you think it's going to go the next couple months? Just sort of maybe trying to convince some of your, uh, your bosses to draft a certain defenseman from the program, uh, at the, near the top of the draft. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there shouldn't be, uh, much convincing needed to do, you know, he's, Think if he, I would, I would think that you know if he's there, I'd, I'd want us to take him, and I'm not shy about saying that. But at the end of the day, it is what it is, and Luke's gonna find his way. You know, he's a great player, and um, I'd love to have him in New Jersey. But if it doesn't work out, and then it doesn't work out, and you know, there's a good chance we get the, we get a pick, and Luke's gone before us. So I'd love him here, but I mean, it is what it is. It's gonna happen how it happens. Have you uh, any advice for him, given, you know, just what the process is like coming up? No, all Luke has to do, you know, he did the work. He, he put the work in. His game's good. So all he has to do is kind of sit back and relax and, and wait to hear his name get called. Yeah. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, Corey. We'll go back to Mike Morial for a follow-up. Hey, Jack, um, besides, of course, the, the positional difference, how does Luke differ from Quinn? when it comes to playing defense? Well, Luke was here a week ago, and Luke is 6'2", could be 6'3". I don't know how tall he is. So it's you're dealing with a completely different player. Um, you know, he's got the skating. He's got the smarts that Quinn has. But this is a kid that is, is big. He's, he's not a, a normal Hughes, so to say. Um, so it's going to be a different player than, than, than Vancouver has with Quinn. It's going to be a... He, big time, uh, can shut guys down, offensive, I don't know, maybe like a Shea Theodore kind of player like that. So um, it's exciting. It's exciting to see where Luke will go. Have you watched highlights of Alex Holtz, Jack, spoken to him? If so, I'm just curious what you feel he will add to the team. Yeah, I've I've obviously played against him in a few international tournaments, and I know his game pretty well. Um and then I spoke with him here, uh, I think, last week. So we'll see. I mean, uh, we, we need him to come in and be a pretty good player for us at some point, whether that's next year or two years from now. But um, we'll see. I mean, I, I know we took him in that position to play with me or Nico and, and put goals in the net. So, um, I mean, we'll, we'll see when that is. But we'd like him here. And we'd like him here sooner than later and, and be an impact player for us. And one more, Jack. Do, do you feel as though – do you feel as though Luke – is the toughest of the Hughes brothers? Ah, uh, no, I didn't say that. I think that uh, we're all tough in our own ways. You know, I can't say any one of us are going to go out there and drop the gloves. But you know, we we're tough. We uh, we play through a lot of things, injuries, uh, play through hard things. So uh, I think we're all tough in our own ways. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, Mike. We'll go to Robert Aiken, NorthJersey.com. Jack, uh, happy early birthday, first of all. Thank you. Uh, knowing that you're not going to – next time you're playing a game, you'll you'll be in your 20s. Do you feel like there's any changes in terms of what you might have to do or maybe the the uh, the way people will perceive you now that you're in your 20s and you're no longer going to be a teenager? I don't know, man. I mean, what, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know what you want me to say there, like – I guess I don't think people care if I'm 
20 or 25. Like, I don't think anyone on the other team really cares. Um, I think that the way I see it is I'm going into my third year and I need to take another big step and, and move in the right direction and, and help push this team forward. So, um, I mean, with that being said, though, I'm, I'm 19 and I just finished my second year in the NHL. You know, that's, that's pretty good. So um, that's not too bad. Well, well, we'll stick to just, you know, the year's experience. Going from your second to your third year, is there something specifically you feel like you need to work on in the off season, just taking that next step in your third year? Um, you know, I just – I think I created a ton this year. Um, that was just finishing um, on my part and then maybe getting more luck uh, in terms of setting guys up. But, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. I just got to keep – working on my scoring, working on my shot, you know, with, with all the chances I'm getting. So um, that's something I'll focus on big time. Is getting Ty Smith to be able to drive himself home a priority for you in the off season? <laughs> yeah, I got to hook this guy up with a car, huh? But uh, <laughs> no, we'll see. I, I'll i tell you what, though, I hope he shows up with a car next year because I'm pretty sure he's. I have a grumpy Smith waiting for me um, right now. Thanks, Jack. Happy birthday. Yeah, thanks, man. Thank you, Robert. We'll wrap up. We'll go to Neil McHale inside hockey. Uh, good morning, Jack. Um, I'm just wondering if it all came up in your exit meetings. I mean, we talked about it at times just, you know, you were creating so much, but you weren't, you know, finding back to net just in terms of not being discouraged over, you know, all that you were doing and just not getting rewarded at times. Mm, yeah, it's, it's been brought up. Um, but at the end of the day, it is, it is what it is. You know, the season's over now. Um, could I sit here and could I have had 43 points? Of course, yeah, but it is what it is. And, um, you know, part of that's on me. I got I, I had so many looks, and I got I to gotta just work on my scoring and, 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 and finish those pucks, you know. So um, I'm going to put the work in this summer and, and come back and, and hopefully uh, have another good year. I know practice was not something that, you know, for a lot of reasons, compressed schedule and all the limitations wasn't always available to you. Do you feel like as a young player that – you know, hurt you at all is that you just weren't able to do that as much. You're doing so much more in video and doing these kind of calls. Uh, no, I don't care. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. It was, it was pretty easy. You know, we go to the rank, we play, then go to the rank, practice, play, practice, play, day off. You know, it's, it's kind of the simple life. It's not much to worry about. Just go out there, play hockey and enjoy it. So I can't say us not practicing hurt us. Maybe as a team, it did a little bit, you know, with, a new coaching staff and all the young guys and especially towards the end of the year with all the guys, the new guys coming in and out of the lineup, we could probably could have used some practice time to uh, work on our systems and, and go through things like that. But, you know, our schedule is so crazy, especially after COVID uh, that it just happened how it happened. I'm just wondering if we talked about it before with Luke, I'm wondering if you could just give us a tiny scouting report on, on your brother. Yeah, I, I kind of, I think I nailed it on the head a bit. Um, pretty much Quinn, but six two, six two and a half. You know, he's big, big skater, um, long stick, can play two two ways. He's, he's a power play guy and a PK guy. You know, he can really skate, really think. He's a puck mover. So, I think whatever team gets him is going to be a, a lucky team, and I'd love for uh, for the Devils to get him. And when you get home, I guess, are you two going to talk about that reality? Are you going to throw some devil's hats on or something like that? To see we're going to, no, we're going to, we're going to talk, but you know, it, it, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, um, it doesn't. There's, you know, there's a lot of great places to play and I, I'd like them in New Jersey, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, all, it's not up to me. It's up to the lottery balls and it's, it's uh luck of the draw too. So. We'll see what happens, and uh, and then I'll be excited for him wherever he goes.